Doc, Physics 101, Light and Visual Phenomena, Chapter N, Atmospheric Effects, a quick overview of this chapter. Why is the sky blue? Well, Rayleigh scattering. The blue end of the spectrum scatters more for tiny particles and molecules when compared to the red end. So we're looking at lots of short wavelengths scattering and thus a blue sky. You might notice that when you have smoke particles, uh, they they look white when it's thick, but when you have the edge, you know, you get a little bluish tint, and that's the Rayleigh scattering. Uh, here's a neat effect, polarization by scattering. Here's a light from the sun that has mixed polarization, which I demonstrate by vertical and horizontal polarization, but you can have all kinds of slanted ones in there also, of course. But looking at these two will illustrate the point. And when this incident ray of light hits this a charged particle. It'll make this thing wiggle up and down and left and right in a complicated fashion. But the neat thing here is that when it wiggles this way, that one can't go to the airplane because that would be a longitudinal wave. You always have to be sideways in your oscillations. So that one could go up and can go down. Uh, the one uh, wiggling that's vertical, that one cannot go up or down because you have to be sideways. So that one would go side like this. It would travel in this direction to the plane. So the plane sees polarized light that's vertically polarized and the person on the ground sees horizontal polarized light. Polarization by scattering the sky. Here's an experiment, an observation. I was on campus here looking at the blue sky and try to get my angles just right where the sun was coming in, make a 90 degree angle. And then I had a polarizer I put in front of my camera and if you have a polarizer and rotate it, you then kill polarized light. You can kill this. So by doing that, look how dark it got. Isn't that cool? So use in photography, the polarizer, the filter. Well, let's look at another interesting fact, and that's the Heidinger's brushes. Here, you can possibly see polarized light or know when it's there. Some folks will see a yellow bow tie called the brushes here. And the polarization of the light is along this line here, like perpendicular to, to the, the brush um, direction there. Now, it took me a long time to see this. Once at the University of Maryland, when a sheet was held up, I saw it finally. Then uh, years later, on a computer monitor, in fact, fairly recently, I was seeing yellow spots and I was getting worried that maybe something was wrong with my vision. And then I got my polarizer out and I could rotate it and kill the light, proving therefore that the light from the computer monitor was polarized. So if you have a white, nice white blank screen, you might see this uh, in your eye. Uh, basically, it's in your eyes, detected in your eye. I mean, it's really internal. It's an effect where you are registering the polarization of light. Awesome. So uh, try that next time you're looking at a computer monitor, it's a nice white screen. See if you can see the Heidinger's brushes. Uh, this is neat. This is a reflection, a uh, sun pillar. Look at the nice pillar of sun above the sun. And this is due to ice crystals. Now ice crystals are hexagonal in shape. They have six sides, uh, hexagonal crystals, and many of them are flat and they fall fairly flat when they fall to the ground. So when the light from the sun hits the bottom of the crystal and it reflects to go to your eye, you see light above the sun. Uh, here are two crystals uh, slightly uh, tilted as they fall. They don't fall perfectly horizontal. And you can see here it's going to send light into two directions back there. And you get the pillar of light. Very, very nice above above the sun. Here is the sub-sun where light hits the crystal from the, the top, on the top, and then when it reflects, you think the apparent source of light is below. So you smear it out somewhat because there's some crystals have different angles uh, there slightly, and that's a reverse of a sun pillar, like a sun pillar in reverse. So the sun is up here, and then you see a sub-sun down there because the sunlight hit, bounced off, and you uh, conclude that the source of the light is down here somewhere, the uh, sub-sun. Uh, here we have the beautiful rainbow effect, and for the rainbow here, uh, you can look at the rainbow, primary rainbow, as white light coming in near the top of the droplet, blue bends more than red, you get a reflect, reflection at the back of the drop, some of the light leaks out, we don't care about that, we want the, the, the light that's going to come back to you, so you have the reflection, and then when you uh, have your angle here that's incident coming to go out, your angle of reflection 
uh, well, I'm not showing here, but the refracted angle is the one I'm interested in, because that's the one that's going to get down to your eye. Uh, that one will bend away from the normal. So coming in here, there's a little dotted line here showing the normal. Uh, we bend toward the normal, and going from air to water, blue bends more than red due to the dispersion we talked about uh, before in another cl class. And then there's a reflection at the back uh, part of the drop. The angles, uh, reflection, and the incident angles are equal in each case. And then when you get to this uh, point where you're going to go from water to air, you draw your normals in. You bend away from the normal because you're going from a slow to a fast medium. Uh, this blue light will go above your eye for the uh, top uh, drops. So therefore, you see red on top. And then lower, you'll get the blue light from a lower droplet uh, that I'll get into your eye. So you see different droplets there. Everyone sees their own rainbow from different droplets. And the red's on the top, the blue's on the bottom for a primary rainbow, and the angle's about 40 degrees, you know, 40 to 42 degrees, uh, since there's a little uh, elevation here as you go from the violet end to the uh, red end. So here you got it. And what's at the end of the rainbow? A cup of coffee right there. Now you can get a secondary rainbow, which is lighter, not as bright because of two reflections inside the drop. Here the light hits the bottom of the drop and blue bends more, it reflects, and then reflects again. And then when it gets here to the uh, exit point, uh, we get it bending away from the normal. There's your normal and the blue bends more. So the red goes over your head and blue's on top. The colors are reversed. So in the primary rainbow, the brighter one, red's on top, in the fainter one, the red's on the bottom, and that angle is about 50 degrees, 50 to 54 degrees. That's a taller uh, in the sky, though the rainbow is higher up in the sky due to the greater angle. Uh, then we have here the sun dog. Now here is the hexagonal ice crystal, and I've made here a triangle to show you like a prism effect. It would be the same effect. Light from the sun hits here. There's your normal. It bends toward the normal. And inside the crystal, it travels until it hits the other interface, going from ice to air. And there you bend away from the normal. And the eye concludes that there is a sun over here, the sun dog, the faithful follower of the sun. Just like a dog, your, your pet would follow you, a faithful dog. So that's a 22 degrees uh, for the angle uh, to get to the uh, sun dog. And uh, here we have halos that can form in a similar fashion by hexagonal pencil-like crystals where the light penetrates from the top and does your 22 degree effect like you saw earlier and you get a halo around the sun. You can also get a 46 degree angle. Uh, we're not going to pursue analysis of that case. It's just a 22 degree. Uh, the green flash and the glory, Poisson spot, iridescence are all extra credit. Finally, we come to here the mirage. And the mirage, when you have the cool uh, here above the warm road, you may have noticed that when you drive, you might see water on the road it's not there i remember asking my dad that when i was taking a vacation in north carolina from new jersey he says dad i see rain he says that's a mirage son and he was right and when you get close to it it's still in front of you it's a, you never can catch it it's like that desert mirage here what's happening is that the light is refracting uh, we're gonna here make a model of different layers uh, from cool to hot see the hot sun uh, beaten on the sand makes the sun uh, light on the sand hot sand and asphalt same thing if you walk with your bare feet on asphalt you can burn yourself so you have the hot region down here and then it gets cooler above so here I've made various slabs hottest hot warm cool and cold and when the light comes in here when it goes from cold to a warmer uh, it bends away from the normal because the light will travel faster in a less dense air. So it, ba it bends away. Uh, here it bends away from the normal, away from the normal. And here you have total internal reflection at this bottom uh, uh, interface. And then as you come up here, you bend toward the normal, toward the normal, toward the normal. So the rule is when you see the cold, the cool, and the hot down here, you make it, the uh, arc here as if you are hugging the cold. 
Uh, this is a principle they use in calculus where they make little layers, layers, and layers, and it gets so thin, and there's so many of them, that it approaches a continuum. So you can think of that as a continuum where the light is basically arcing like this, and your eye concludes there must be a tree down below, down there. And how do you know if there's a tree down below? Your brain says, well, that's because there must be some water there, uh, because water is sometimes seen uh, on the road. So the brain interprets that as water, and then when you get closer to that, then uh, the, the bend's not going to be able to be that steep and get your eye. So this thing will move, things will move down to, to the right. You'll see a, a, another tree or farther down or the sky. So that's called an inferior mirage because the image is imaged below the object. You can have the reverse temperature inversion at night uh, where you have a cool lake uh, here, for example, a cool lake, the hot air rises. And when you do the bending here, hugging the cold, just like here, we hug the cold, the cold up there, hug the cold. Then you see a ship flying up there upside down. Uh, in the sky and be somewhat blurry won't be that clear so you see like a sail or a ship you say hey there's a ship up there and that's the flying dutchman mirage very very neat that's called a superior mirage since the mirage is above the object so here's your rule when you have cool and hot just make a little arc like that and that's the analysis see cool and hot down here hug the cool and then you get your conclusion that your image is inferior down there. And here, cool and hot, hug the cool. And you see that the eye tracing this ray backwards, some ship up there in the sky. A blasphemous oath made by a captain condemned to sail in the sky with dead crew forever and ever. The Flying Dutchman story.